Good morning. I wanted to start this video by apologizing to you about all the levels of confusion on yesterday. Uh, big shouts out to a lot of you that just knew how to go ahead and follow the thread. That is the name of the game here. Follow the thread. Anything that you see posted on Teams, you can look on the outside or you can go inside of the meeting and you can actually see the things in the chat box. They're there. They're posted. I also am going to be sending you probably within the next five minutes or so the email from yesterday's class recap because I did not get a chance to send that to anybody. So I'll be getting that to you. Um, anytime that there's a change up in the way we're having to do things, the email and the Teams page are the two ways that I'm going to communicate with you. If you are not able to reach me or communicate with me, you need to be using that 901 cell number, that Google Voice number that I gave you. You need to be using that number so that you can reach out to me and say, hey, I didn't get the email. Hey, this, this, this. Tell me these things so that I can make adjustments and get you what you need. So I'm going to do a little bit of more reading today. And I want to make sure that you all are following along. Okay, we're in chapter four and we're dealing with the industrial, the rise of the industrial revolution. Um, and the things that are included in this rise are the commercial revolution, the Colombian exchange, um, even the revolutions that were surrounding um, this time frame. So I started yesterday reading and I was giving you information about the commercial revolution. I'm going to read a little bit more. This is still in section uh, lesson one of chapter four. So it says the economic factors that contributed to the commercial revolution included trade, exploration, colonization, and new financial practices. To find new trade routes, European states sent ships down the coast of Africa or across the Atlantic. These explorations opened European eyes to economic opportunities in faraway lands. New lands held new trade partners or valuable resources to exploit. The word exploit means I'm going to use it for my good. It doesn't always mean it's for your good, but you could benefit. But ultimately, when you exploit something, you're using it for your good. Keep that word in mind. Soon, European powers established colonies in every continent they visited. These colonies were the outposts of new trading networks that made European powers rich during the commercial revolution. So this is how they made their money, by opening up these new trade markets in these places that they were visiting. The, the flow of wealth was so great that new financial practices emerged to manage the money, including new kinds of banking, accounting, and insurance, joint stock companies, a financial practice which began <clears throat> excuse me, in the Middle Ages, flourished in this period. A joint stock company is a business where stocks or a share of ownership in the company can be bought and owned by shareholders. The practice of buying in to a company to purchase its stocks provided trade companies with, with a large pool of money they could use to fund overseas ventures. Joint stock company, definitely going to be something on your quiz. A new economic principle of mercantilism also contributed to the success of the commercial revolution. Mercantilists believe that the prosperity of a nation depends on a large supply of bullion or gold and silver. The fastest route to a large supply of gold and silver was to extract it from one's colonies. The other method was to earn the gold and silver through having a favorable balance of trade. The balance of trade is the difference in value between what a nation imports and what it exports over time. Imports are goods brought into a country. Exports are goods shipped out of a country. When the balance is favorable, the exported goods are of greater value than the imported goods. To encourage exports, governments stimulated the growth of industries and trade. They granted subsidies, like little extra favors, to the new industries. Subsidies are payments made to support enterprises a government thinks are beneficial. Governments also improved transportation systems. They placed high taxes on foreign goods to keep the balance of trade favorable. Taxes make foreign goods less attractive because they raise the price of imports. Colonies were important as sources of raw materials and were as markets for exports of manufactured goods. 
Okay, the next thing that we'll learn about is the Columbian Exchange. Okay, we talked a little bit about the Atlantic slave trade, but the Columbian Exchange is something that we'll talk about in the videos that you'll see. Uh, and we'll also get a video about the uh, emergence of the Industrial Revolution in Great Britain. So I just wanted to read a little bit from that lesson one and be sure that you've got a, a summary of the commercial revolution. This term mercantilism, very important, is which is the belief that prosperity of a nation depended on its supply of bullion, gold and silver, contributed to the success of the commercial revolution. The Columbian Exchange, a big idea, the exchange of plants, animals, and even things like diseases between Europe and the Americas was a part of the Columbian Exchange. So the commercial revolution and the Columbian Exchange go hand in hand because there's all this trading and all this going back and forth. So the, the thing that you should be kind of picking up on in terms of what our objectives were, when we were talking about how, uh, going back to it, the emergence of the Industrial Revolution in Europe, the geographic, economic, and political implications of the changes that resulted from it. Okay, geographic, economic, political, okay, the changes that resulted from it. So we've got good money coming in going back and forth, but we also have some negative things going back and forth. We spent a lot of time yesterday talking about the slave trade and the fact that that was a way to encourage industry because it did, it brought money and it was, it was very lucrative. But is that a good idea to enslave people to get money? So think about those things and um, be sure that you watch the other videos that I include, read the email, read the instructions. If I ask for five facts or three facts or three words, please just go ahead and do what I need you to do. And you can put that right in the chat box, right on the Teams page, or you can just send that information to me in an email, respond to the email that I send you that has this information in it. So if you have questions, please, TJ Cooper at jmcss.org. Shoot me an email any way you can. Progress reports are going to get uh, sent home today, uh, and they're they're not conclusive, which means we all we always have time to adjust things. But this is where some people are at this moment. Um, there are things that I still need to add, and I will continue to add things. But I'm also going to expect for people to kind of follow with us and come with us and communicate with me and make sure you know what you need to do. All right, peace and love. Until next time.